Hey guys, I'm Kai from Lucas Lynn and Royals. Hope you're doing well. And I'm happy to announce that the Fish Room Snake Room expansion has officially begun. So really excited about that. I do have to say though, I grossly underestimated the amount of work required. I mean, going into this, I did have a high level plan, um, some steps and the order in which I needed to execute those steps. But there's a lot of details that I just forgot to factor in where I just didn't bother with them while I was making my plans. And now because of that, my basement is one big mess. Needless to say, progress has been really slow. Those of you who follow me on Facebook know that I've been sick for a while and that really limited my abilities to get anything done. But now I'm feeling a little bit better. So I wanna show you the progress that I have made. By the way, this is not a DIY video. I am showing you what I've done and why I'm doing certain things, but I'm purposely leaving out the how-tos because this is not a DIY video. And you know, if you get into an accident or if you get into an argument with your spouse or loved ones, you can't hold me responsible, all right? Currently, the basement is in a complete disarray. Um, I, I still live here, my family still lives here, and it's really hard to do any demoing or remodeling when there's still people living here, um, not to mention all the fish and the animals that I have downstairs in the basement. So in order for me to do any work, I basically have to move all the items and fish and fish tanks from one side of the room to the other side so I can do a little bit of work. And then once that work is done, I basically have to move all those fish tanks again uh, to get access to the new area to do the work and so on and so forth. So it is a ton of work and it is very time consuming. My fish are actually in the middle of breeding right now. They have a couple batches of babies. So that makes things even a little bit more difficult and stressful for me and for the fish because I'm basically draining the tank, moving the fish in the fish tank, then refilling them up and hoping that uh, the parents don't eat the babies because sometimes they do that when they get stressed out. So the fish in the aquariums definitely add more work, work that I wasn't expecting, that I didn't factor into the overall plan and schedule, and that's my fault. Fish pretty much breed all year round, so there's really no good time to get started, so you might as well just pick a day and have at it. What I wanna do now is walk you through the basement in its current state, talk a little bit about what's going on, explain a few things and why I'm doing certain things, and then also tell you a little bit about what the next steps are. So let's get started. So you're probably used to seeing this wall. This is where I do some of my filming. Um, by the way, if you hear a buzzing noise, I'll explain what that is, but hopefully that's not too distracting. Anyway, there's quite a few things that are out of place right now. So that's the table that I use to sit behind. There's some, uh, dirty snake hides and that tub down there has some old co um, cocoa, cocoa block. Um, yeah, some old snake dishes and hides that I have to wash. Um, over here, I'm getting low on boxes. I am still selling snakes on Morph Market, so if you're interested, take a look at my Morph Market store. I am still selling them, but I do have to replenish my boxes because I'm running low. And then over here, we have the freezer that holds all of the frozen rats. And then up here you can see I have some uh, egg boxes that I got ready. So that's for the 2020 season, some fish stuff, some plumbing, um, a lot of fish stuff basically. There's uh, pumps and air pumps and filters and sponges and all that stuff for the fish. Um, and you can see over here, these are additional tubs that's gonna be for the egg boxes. There's the egg crates. Um, but anyway, there's gonna be quite a few things that are messy right now. Um, again, this is all just temporary. So that's the uh, duffel bag that's got all my YouTube lighting and things like that in there. And then over here, you guys might recognize this. This is the fish tank that you probably saw in my very, very old DIY builds. So this tank doesn't belong here. I'll show you in a minute where it's supposed to go. The fish used to be, um, I used to have like fancy goldfish in here. Now they're uh, cool looking imported koi. 
Um, I just moved this over. I'm actually doing a water change. It's kind of dirty right now. And you can see over here, there's filtered water going in. And then I have a overflow over here. And there's just a tube that leads to the drain. A couple of empty buckets for water changes and things like that. Um, and then up here, I have additional, additional fish tanks. Um, so this one over here, I have in here a pair of double black angel fish. They're called double black because they're pretty much pitch black. And then they got the fins that look like veil, which is really cool. Um, the water's lowered right now because I just installed these bulkheads. I think this one is okay. I'll be filling this water up a little bit later. And then over here, this bulkhead was leaking a little bit. I did a water test, it was leaking, so I had to redo that one. So that's still wet silicone on there. Um, and I did re-silicone these tanks. Um, I'll probably show you what that process is like in a future video. But basically, the noise that you hear right now are from the air pumps. So now we walk around back. Everything is out of place right now. So we got jugs of water. These are all filtered water for the snakes. And then we got some extra towels. Um, just in case of spills from the water and from the fish. We got more towels. We got some pro cocoa. We got some apple wood. So this is for barbecuing, but for those of you who uh, breed rats and mice, you know that they need to chew on wood. So that's a great product for them to chew on. It's very safe. Um, and then over here, we got a stand. This used to be a stand for a 55 gallon tank. That tank is now upstairs, but underneath this, are just more crap just a bunch of things um, here's some more noise that you might be hearing uh, these are air bubblers and they're being supplied by this air pump uh, if you don't know what this is it's kind of looks like a science experiment but basically i am hatching baby brine shrimp for my fish babies if you don't know what that looks like so this is the brine shrimp eggs that you can get it comes in a vial you can get this from a pet store Basically, you just put these eggs into water with some salt and some air bubblers and in about 24 to 48 hours, you get baby shrimp. So then we pan over here to this corner. Pay no attention to the spots on the walls. That's just a paint chipping off. But uh, this is what I've been working on all morning. This is where that koi tank used to reside. It took every ounce of my strength to move that to where it is now uh, so that I can have this space available and open to do what I need to do, which is where I'm going to be putting the washer and dryer. Um, so I'll show you what my plans are to getting everything moved up over here in just a minute. But let's pan over here. This is the discus babies. This is a pretty bad batch. Bad as in it was a really small batch. Um, you can see there's only probably seven of them and a couple of them are runts as you can see. A good batch looks like this down here. Where did they go? Ah, there they are. So that's the dad that's all orange and then the mom has a pattern and you can see there's a lot more babies with this batch than the last one. And then up over here we have another discus. This one I got from a friend. We did a trade because uh, I needed this one because of its bloodline and genetics. And the one I had was a like show grade discus, so I traded him. Um, I am putting him up here. It's kind of like quarantine, but I, I know because of where I got him from, I probably don't have the quarantine. So what I'm doing right now is just conditioning him getting him a little bit beefier and getting him used to my water and the food that I feed so that when it comes time to breed with the females that I have, he'll be able to uh, get the job done, so to speak. And then we move over here. Again, a lot of clutter, moving things around. So this is the utility sink, the trash. So this is where the washer and dryer currently reside. As you can see, it is right next to the snake room right there. So we have basically spun around 180 or I should say 360 so the washer and dryer is here right now the washer empties into the utility sink 
uh, the dryer is over here. It is a gas dryer, so I'm, I am moving the gas pipe. And as you can see, there is a dryer exhaust as well. So I'm putting that in and I'll show you what I've done so far in trying to get those things completed. So again, we're here where the washer and dryer is going to be. This is going to get moved out uh, completely out of the way. Um, right now, I have an empty tank down here with just some uh, miscellaneous supplies. And then in here, well, I have basically mice and rats together because I have a female that is on mice and I need to get her switched over to rats. So I'm scenting the rats with the mice smell so that hopefully she'll prey on those items. But anyway, up here, we have the beginning of a gas pipe that has been moved over to here. So I basically tapped an existing gas pipe and I moved it over here. That existing gas pipe was 3 4 inch um, and I moved it all the way over here. That's why you see this shiny metal. And then we have a reducer going to half inch. And then finally we have a valve that's closed right now. And that was a lot of work too. That took quite a few hours. I thought it'd be much quicker, but it turned out it took longer than I had anticipated. And then over here we have the duct work. Um, this is going outside. This is all done. I just have a towel stuffed in there because I was getting a draft in here. So, but that is venting to the outside. So that is where the dryer is going to hook up to. So I need an additional pipe that goes out here and then down. And then the dryer is going to sit right in this area right here. And then the, it'll vent out to that ductwork that I already have in place. And then right around here is where the washer is going to reside. I haven't done anything with the water or drain yet, but I do have to drag a couple water lines, the hot and the cold over here. And then also right be, about from here to about here, a new utility sink is going to go here. The old utility sink is going to stay exactly where it is, which is right there, because I'm going to continue using that for the fish and for the snakes. The new one is going to go right around here. And then next to that new one, I'm going to have a wall that's going to extend out this way and then behind me. And the reason I'm doing that is just to partition this room a little bit more. So there's a clear division that over here is a laundry and utility room. And then over here is going to be all my snakes and fish. So this way we don't have snake sheds ending up in the utility sink. And we don't have bubbles and suds ending up in my fish tanks because that's not good for the fish. It's hard to believe that the middle of this basement was once clear. It's actually where I used to do some of my videos. Um, but right now they're cluttered with fish tanks and things like that. Uh, my goal right now is to get the laundry area squared away so that I can move the fish tanks out from the middle of the basement and that way I can start building the partition walls that are going to make up the new fish slash snake room. I'll make more videos of my progress so if you want to see content just like this make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. If you enjoyed this video do me a favor and give me a thumbs up I would really appreciate it. As always thanks for watching please share and I'll see you guys next time.